So, on to the oil, the dipstick. So original dipstick, um, what we talk about is that they don't have a crimp right here. So uh, the later service ones will have a crimp. And that looks like this here. This is a later service one. We'll hold this side by side so you can see the difference. So you see this crimp right there. You don't see that right there, side by side. The uh, dipstick tube, if you really, this is another interesting little detail. If you look at them closely, you'll see they have a FOMOCO stamp on them like that. A little hard to see once it's installed, but that's what the originals had was a little stamp on the metal bracket itself. The oil filters uh, show the progression here. So 68 and most of 69, the oil filters are going to have a double crimp. You can see the top of the oil filter. Then into 70, single crimp. These are dated on the side here. This is a 68 oil filter. This is a 70 oil filter. And then assembly line, they were painted blue. These were painted off of the engine, but this is an original um, one that's still got the factory color on it. But before the first oil change, that's what would be on the car. The oil filter adapter, there's two different styles. This is uh, on the display engine. I have this here. This is for a drag pack and it has an oil cooler, a separate oil cooler. This is an NOS unit that I put on here. And then the others are going to look like this. This is pretty common. So you have the, uh, the standard oil filter adapter that goes to the block itself. Show another example of one right there. And then the, uh, the senders, there's two different style of senders that would go on top of there. You have the, um, this one here is with just the light. If the car has just a light in the dash, this here is if it has a gauge, this style. And that, you can see the Ford stamp on the top there, on that one. This also has a Fomoco stamping right there. Most notable is that green insulator. The Carter uh, fuel pump, I did want to point out, I showed this before. This is our Carter fuel pump. There's actually two different styles here. Uh, typically you see that stamping on the top, that on the bottom. These are the original gaskets um, that go on here. But there is a later style of Carter fuel pump. It looks like this here where it has, it's stepped. That top section there, you can see right there, it has a step on it. It's, st it's still a, the right style fuel pump, but to me this is a later, after 1970, fuel pump. The alternator, uh, starting in around February of 69, you see them stamped like this. So they put the die down first and then they stamped into the die. So there would be no color where the stamping is. Before that, the alternator for 68, well this is 70, for 68 you won't see that. Just like that. Early 69, like that as well. So February 69 and later, you're going to see looking like that. The engine insulators, these are all going to be a red color on there. So let's find one that we can look at easily like this. So I have pictures of original ones. Try to duplicate that. So they would just have a red swatch on them. The interesting thing here is that they're all the same except for convertibles. A convertible has a totally different insulator. They look the same, but this one here, show pictures of it. It had kind of a, oh, magenta type color. Uh, different engineering number, different part number. If you look up in the parts book, 
convertible has a different insulator. Not sure why Ford did that because eventually what they did is they serviced them all. All of the, starting in 71, they were all these. They had a yellow swatch on them. Uh, it was a D1ZA number on there. So you see yellow blobbed on these. This one's on the side. A little bit here. But the originals, for most purposes, except for convertibles, they're going to be a red color on there. And this is sometimes confusing. These are the engine to frame brackets. They look just like this. They look all the same, except they're not. Uh, these are big block. So this is correct for a 428. And this is correct for a small block. So you wonder what the difference is. The difference is simply, you can maybe see it better from this side, uh, well actually from this side, is the holes here, the holes here in the frame, you can see this one how, how high up this hole is here, right there, so that's a big block. This one here is a small block, so this is, it shifts from here to here with a big block, and what that does is it'll rotate the way it sits in the car then. So it wouldn't work very well if you tried to use the wrong one on there. Uh, exhaust manifolds, these are all the same. Uh, late 70 or different, I don't have an example of that. Um, but I should have in the article, but the 68 is an interesting one. So this one's different. 68, um, this is the passenger side. Difference if you look here, also right there, but here, no reinforcement. And then if you look at this here, 69, you can see how that's reinforced. It's different. Uh, engine lift hooks, you have this one on the, uh, on the passenger side, like that. That's where that gets mounted. No engineering numbers on it. Driver's side uh, mounts here. You have engineering numbers on here. Those engine lift hooks were never serviced, so you either have an original one. Well, they make reproductions of them anyway, but um, yeah, they were not serviced by Ford. Uh, the, the end of the exhaust manifolds, what you're going to typically see are these flange bolts on there. That connects to the H-pipe. Uh, the belts, so the belts, there's all kinds of different configurations for the belts with power steering, without power steering, um, air conditioning, no air conditioning. So today, um, these reproductions are made. They, they look really good. They work well. They fit right. Um, so for most purposes, that's good. If you're going for a thoroughbred, you're going to want to have something like this here. These are the... Uh, embossed belts. This is the way they came from the factory. 367, third quarter of 67 on this belt. Uh, these two here, fourth quarter of 69, just to give an idea what the original ones look like. And the, the hoses as well. So original hoses, uh, radiator hoses, they have this really interesting texture. You can see that better here. These are some service ones. But you could see that nothing like that's been duplicated. See the stripe in it there. These are original Ford hoses for the 428. Uh, the fans, fan clutches. I'm actually waiting for this is a close one to what the 68 looked like. Uh, the original one's out getting rebuilt right now. I didn't want to wait for it to come back. Um, and then on the article, I have a chart of what fan clutches or no fan clutch. This would be for a 430 car uh, in 70. Uh, different fans and fan clutch combinations. Uh, the air conditioning. Air conditioning I wanted to show. So this car has air conditioning, the 70 uh, ARI convertible. These are the original style. Uh, this is the adjustment pulley. And you can see, I'll show you, this is what the later ones look like or aftermarket. 
they look totally different. So if you're doing a high-end restoration, this just doesn't look right. You know, having that and having that is a big difference. And then you can see the brackets phosphate, the pulley is black, and it has some, you know, almost looks like a freeze plug in the middle that's also phosphate. So, yeah, you want to, uh, I think for authenticity, that looks really good. So I look for NOS ones. Uh, the same thing with this one here. This is the uh, idler pulley here. And we have an OS example of that here. Same thing, it has kind of this freeze plug look in the middle. Phosphate for the bracket, black for the pulley. And I, I don't know if the books tell you or not, but there is spacer. You have to put a spacer here. You have to put another spacer uh, down on the bottom. If you don't do that, then this doesn't line up correctly. This will be off. You'll have all kinds of issues, but it needs a spacer, a washer here and down there, and then this will line up really nicely. Uh, I do surface these here. There's no compressor on here right now. Uh, that's with the car, but some of these you can see just a little bit when this is installed, so it's kind of a nice touch to see that underneath. Pretty easy to do that. Um, two things that I see wrong quite a bit on these engines, the bypass hose and the clamps, these are supposed to be blue. A lot of times you see these not painted. This gets put on before the engine is painted. This has to be on here, the water pump. So this doesn't go on afterwards. Just these get painted. They sell reproduction clamps. It looks really good when you do it this way. And then on the flip side, these do not get painted. So the heater hose connection on the water pump does not get painted. So that would be a bare color. And here I have a really cool, uh, these are original clamps. They're Wittick clamps. And some of them, you could see the W stamped in the top like that. They're dated January 69 on the bottom. But yeah, I look for these... Um, Pretty rare to find them with the W. So when you see that, you know it's the real deal. Ideally, you want to have something like that up here that shows like that. And finally, a couple last things. Uh, oh yeah, the um, the pumps. Are they supposed to be black? Are they supposed to be teal? Uh, I get that question quite a bit. That really just has to do with uh, the manufacturer of the pump. The manufacturer of the pump dictates that. The teal color was Ford Thompson, black is TRW. The tag on the back will tell you which is which. So if it has an F on there, it's teal. If it has a W on there, it's a black pump. They use both. So you want to match up what the tag says uh, to the actual um, color that you're going to do on the pump itself. The oil pans, I'll put a photo in here um, from the underside of it. The, the Cobra Jet oil pans are distinct. They have an indentation in the bottom. Uh, there's some that don't have that and it could cause clearance issues. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Uh, kind of a longer video. I did want to show all these details. I'm glad that I was able to do it. Um, yeah, it's it's been an effort to put this together, but uh, I didn't think I'd have the opportunity to do that, and uh, I wanted to share that with everyone. So thanks to anybody that watched this. Uh, if you have questions, reach out to me, and uh, I always try to make myself available. And hopefully we'll have these two cars with their engines back in there tomorrow. Thanks again.